Yeah. Right. Yeah. You wanted to say a quick hello, yeah, didn't you? Off you go. Can I say hello to Lawrence Bristow, Gavin Clark, Ian Cook, Neil Writing, Justin Harvey, Tilly, Jason and my daughter. No. Right, OK. And you wiggle your cheek up and down like that. And all your friends can wiggle their cheeks up and down as well. That's good. OK, now, do you remember yesterday? Do you remember the yesterday with the sheep station? Bah, bah. Uh, well, we were out at that mining town in uh, Broken Hill, uh, where there are loads of sheep, of course. There must be farmers and lots of farmers with families. And what happens if the farmer falls ill when he's 300 miles from the nearest doctor? Well, you call out the doctor, of course. The flying doctor. <laughs> Good morning. It's just after seven o'clock in the morning and the doctor's about to make his first surgery call. The only difference is, it's 300 kilometres away. The whole trip today is six hours behind all. Unlike other doctors, the flying doctor has added problems. Here we have a problem with a flat battery in the engine. What's the problem you're having? The problem we're having is uh, we're uh, getting a suspected hung start. The engine's refusing to actually uh, to spool up and, and to speed up to its proper operating speed. Is it dangerous? No. Nothing's dangerous in aviation. Only dangerous if you drive motor cars. That's dangerous. Where are you going to today? Well, Kenya, Ivanhoe, and today, which is a rare thing. We're going, myself and the flight sister, are going to Dubbo to pick a lady up from, who's being dropped off at Dubbo from Sydney by the air ambulance service out of Sydney. Which is how far from here? Uh, to 2374 miles, nautical miles. No good? Uh, We're going to the other aeroplane, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, that was nice. All out. You didn't want to go this one anyway, did you? <laughs> Something tells me it's just time to stop, I don't know. BJC Broken Hill, we hold telegram traffic here for VJ 5AZ in Linka. Stations with all four telegram traffic, over. This is the nerve centre of the Royal Flying Doctor Service, and from here they can talk to people over an area of 600,000 square miles. That's bigger than the whole of Great Britain. Hello, hello, hello. Is that the Royal Flying Doctor Service? This is Timmy Mallet here. I've got a broken hill! We've just seen the Flying Doctor taking off. Now we're off in hot pursuit of him, and we're going to meet up with him in midair. The Flying Doctor Service has been running for 50 years in Australia. It covers an area about the size of Western Europe. This particular one, which operates out of Broken Hill, covers a quarter of New South Wales, a large part of South Australia, and right up into Queensland as well. There he is! There's the Flying Doctor! And we're coming right up close alongside him! That's fantastic! We're just a thousand feet now, there's the runway directly ahead of us. We're going to go down and land first. The Flying Doctor will come in very quickly behind us. He's not got long to stop, he won't turn the engines off, but he'll drop a Doctor off, and then they're going to take off because they've got more missions to do this morning. It's a very, very busy day for the Flying Doctor service. This is Ivanhoe Hospital, about a mile away from the airstrip. Most of the cases they deal with here are fairly routine, but occasionally you get bites from red-back spiders, or snake bites, or even dehydration and sunstroke. But there's no stopping for the pilots of the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia as they head off for yet another mission out into the outback. Can you imagine flying to school? Wouldn't it be just fun? Fantastic! It will be great! Anyway, that's the Royal Flying Doctor Service, and if you watch tomorrow morning, you'll be able to see all of my adventures in the land down under. You'll also be able to meet some uh, wacky wombats, some crazy kangaroos, some dizzy dingoes, and heaps more stuff like that, and also find out how easy or how difficult it is to become a lifeguard. So watch tomorrow morning, don't forget, OK? Right, it's time now for the big final, and here we go, it's this. <laughs> all right, our two finalists we've got. Philip Warren. And what have you got to say? 
Bonza. Bonza blur blur in Bonza. <laughs> You've had all morning to practice that, and you are. Faye. And you can say it, can't you, Faye? Bonza big. Bloody blight in back of Burke. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> all right. Look at each other go. What am I doing? Watermelon. Look at them and go, watermelon. Watermelon. Back home you say? Yes, you do. And the word is marmalade. Eat. Nice. Horrible. Disgusting. No, we're not having horrible or disgusting. <laughs> okay, bored with that. Tin foil. Save. Rack. Up. Down. <laughs> in in between. Up. No, that's a repeat, but very good. <laughs> right, we've got wheelbarrow now. Move. Up. No, you've just had it up. <laughs> OK, sparrow. Bird. Fly. A lot. <laughs> a lot. I like it. I'll let you go. Go on. Hi. Yeah? Bye. Bye? No! <laughs> Crayon. Draw. Writing. Yeah. Colours. Yeah. Paper. Red. Yellow. Orange. Oh, gosh. Colour. No, we have to repeat. <laughs> Tangerine. <laughs> Oh, it's all right. We're going to do OK there, but time is up, so let's check our scores. How many did you get? <laughs> Two. And how many did you get? Two. I thought you got more than that. Jaws said you got four. So you're going to get the plaster. Where's it going to go? Um, the cheek. Right, OK. Let's put it on your cheek over here. OK, Jaws will just stick it on. Thank you, Jaws. Lovely. Wiggle your cheek up and down. And here is your prize. You get the wax up with the boingy, boingy, bonkers boomerang in there. Okay, so well done. Now then, uh, it's time to meet up with Kevin the Keeper and find out what he's got in store for us today. Now, he's kept the biggest of our slimy creatures until the last, and it's the giant alligator. But we weren't just there to have a pee put in because Kevin decided it was uh, a pretty good idea if we fed our toothsome friend and he was very oh, hungry. Right behind me, it's dinner time for the alligator. Now, Kevin here has never fed this alligator before. He's more nervous than you and I are. He's got in that bucket the dinner. Down here in the water is the alligator. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you come. Come on, baby. <gasps> your fingers. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Don't be, walk be... away. Oh, he missed it. I... Ah. Oh, look. Oh, you finish your food off. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, I beg your pardon. What a rude thing to do. hanging out the side of its mouth. Fancy eating all that lot in one go. No knife and fork, no tomato ketchup, no salt and pepper, no manners. Anyway, Wackaday fans, that's all for this week. Ah, it's just not fair. But remember, if you tune in tomorrow, you can see all the adventures down under, OK, including the encounter with the Goanna, a trip in a helicopter, a splash with the Sydney Beach lifeguards, and a tour around the outback town of Broken Hill. So make sure you're watching tomorrow morning, Wide Awakers. Bye-bye. This is Central in the East Midlands. We begin our programmes as usual by catching up with Central News. Good morning. A pensioner has been rescued from her burning home by a passerby. Kathleen Geary, who's 73, collapsed in her bungalow at San Diego. Gary Wilde, who's 21, broke into the house after spotting the fire and pulled her to safety. Both were treated in hospital. Doctors are warning that old people are being exposed to risks from sleeping tablets. Research at Nottingham University shows that 16 out of every 1,000 elderly patients are taking tablets that are addictive and can cause confusion. The report says the pills can also cause daytime withdrawal effects. An engineering firm has shut down with the loss of 120 jobs. The Babcock Roby plant in Lincoln finally closed its doors last night. Altogether, nearly 300 jobs have gone since the firm announced they were pulling out of the city last year. Councillors are opposing plans for a new shopping centre, which they say will destroy more jobs than it will create. Developers have submitted plans for the site on the disused Babington Colliery to Nottingham City and Broxtow Borough Councils. They say the shopping, leisure and housing complex will create a thousand jobs. 
Bombers from the famous Dambusters Squadron are to stage a fly-past over the Derwent Dams in North Derbyshire. A Lancaster bomber and other planes from the wartime 617 Squadron will fly over the reservoir to mark the 45th anniversary of the raids on German dams. The squadron trained for the operation on the Derbyshire Reservoir. The fly-past in May is expected to attract 30,000 spectators. Sport Now and Derby County manager Arthur Cox says there's no crisis at the baseball ground despite the club's slump towards the foot of the first division. Derby face West Ham tomorrow, but Cox insists the prospect of relegation isn't even being considered, even though they're fourth from the bottom. You can't say things like that. Blimey, these things can be settled. As promotions are settled, they can be, they can be uh, settled in the, in the last few seconds of a season and whatnot. And, and that's what creates excitement and entertainment, isn't it? The weather now, another bright day, but cold with snow showers, top temperature 4 Celsius, 39 Fahrenheit. That's all for now. Join us again at 11.25. Nick Owens, our guest presenter in the time, the place at 10.30 this morning, and Nick will have news of that in a moment or two. Then it's Michael Parkinson with, of course, give us a clue. The price is right. They flock in from everywhere to come on down. We have really excelled ourselves. From the far southwest of England, Penzance, right up to the north of Scotland, Inverness. From Dublin... From the Isle of Man and Potter's Pet Shop. What better recommendation can you have? Fridays at 7 on Central. TV Times goes to Hollywood to see how Movie Town will welcome the Duke and Duchess of York. Pregnant she may be, but for Fergie, the show must go on with the screen's most powerful and famous queuing up to be presented. Still in Los Angeles, suave Corbin Bernson of L.A. Law talks about his off-screen affairs. We preview Bookie, a tough new ITV drama series, and it's the final winning lines check. Somebody's won a lot of cash. It could be you. That's TV Times this week. If, for every child in care, there really were this many families coming forward, then they might be able to pick and choose. What they'd be looking for in new parents is someone who knows and understands their needs. Someone who cares. But it isn't like this. You may have happy memories of machines like these from your childhood. They're one-armed bandits, of course, and today, for some families, they're a curse. It can even lead to crime. Find out more on the time, the place, at half past ten. Thanks, Nick. In half an hour at ten o'clock, we're off to Santa Barbara, where it's certainly warmer than here. In fact, sometimes it's positively steamy. So, Santa Barbara at ten, but now, give us a clue. Right, you all? Yes. Which is coming up uh, in a couple of moments or two. Sorry about the delay in this. We'll get it to you just as quickly as we can. Time to very quickly... Oh, I can just tell you now that we're coming up to the programme. And here it is. Come back to spread it. In theatres too. Give us a clue. Does TV show it? Do bookworms know it? One word or two. Give us a clue. Give us a clue. Give us a clue. With Michael Parkinson. Hi. Hi. And on my team, I have Paul Jones, <laughs> Tim Clayman, <laughs> and Nino Pilato. Nino Ferretto. We'll have anybody on this show. We really will. It's a show featuring lots of mute mucking. Dig a big hole, certainly much bigger than the root ball, and to put in some 
uh, peat and fertilizer and to keep feeding in the initial stages to give the plant a good start in life. Once it's had a good start, it'll grow away very happily. But whatever...